Shalom Aleichem Rabbi Yisai. Now we are on Rosh Kodesh Adar, and we're learning Parshas Truma. And um, this is a complicated parsha because it deals with the building of the Mishkan. So why does Truma, building of the golden Mishkan, come now? when we know the golden Mishkan is a kapara for making the big Avera of the golden Egel. So why do you read the Truma now, when the, the subject of Egel is three weeks from now in Kisiso? Why would you want to read Parsha's Truma, which is a kapara for the golden Egel, and it started the day after Moshe came down from Harsinai on Yom Kippur, means 11th day of Tishrei, which is day after Yom Kippur, and that's an atonement, the golden Mishkan, for the golden night, Egel, when Egel didn't happen yet. The Egel happened in Shiva Asa Batamus. <laughs> Building the Mishkan is three months later. But you, build, but you read the build, Mishkan first. How's that work? So we can say, Ein Mukdam um Ucher Batorah. There's no earlier or later in the Torah. There's no chronological order. The Torah is not a history book. History book, you see that from way in the beginning of the world. In the beginning, I mean, all of a sudden, Otto Arisha is a full-grown man. But when was he born? I mean, May, first day. So it's not a history book. Moshe Abain, who was 15 years old, and kills a mystery, and then you see him again at the age of 80. What happened with those uh, 65 years? Or if he killed him at the age of 20 to 80, what happened to the 60 years? And how come we don't hear about anything about Avram until he's 70 years old? Yeah, he was a little boy, and then you hear about him at 70. It's not a history book. History book doesn't leave out important dates. This is a book of ethical values of Musa. It starts out in the same operations to tell you Hashem owns the world. Created the world, and there was a man, Avram, who selected to believe in this invisible force called Hashem, and the Ovos came, he was one of the Ovos, and Klaus Yisrael came from him, and God created the world, Sefer Beresh, it's called Sefer Ha Yitzira, and now we get to Sefer Shmos, which is the Sefer Geula, getting out of its rhyme, and what do you do in the Midbar when you're out of its rhyme? So it's not a book of um, chronology, chronology, it's ethical values. So what does that have to do with that question? He got out of its rhyme, you heard the Seres Dibros. Right after the Seres Dibros, we learned Mishpatim, 53 mitzvahs, the major concepts are in the Seres of Dibros. Let's learn some of those important concepts built into the Seres of Dibros. Hmm? So we learned about the first Mitzvah of Mishpat, about they have an Ebed Ivri, don't mistreat them, employees, and if you beat somebody up, you have to pay the, the, the five compensations, and you learn about stealing and cheating and lying, all between man and man. The main thrust of Yahadus is between the Odom Lachavero, not Odom Lamokom. Because you could learn that from Avram Avinu when he saw well, Avram Avinu when he saw all the three eight goyim. He thought they were goyim. He didn't know they were angels. And at that moment, at age ninety nine, when he had a bris on the third day of getting healed from his bris, he sees three angels which are in the shape of people. At that moment, Hashem came to him. mamre. <clears throat> on the same minute, the angels came because God set that up. Hashem set up the three people that looked like goyim. And Hashem came at the same moment to see where Avram Avinu's priorities are. Was it speaking to God the Creator or taking care of three hungry guy Arabs? Rashi says, from here we learn that Hachnosas Arachim, taking care of guests, is much more important than conversing with the Creator of the world. Mikan, Rashi says from the Gemara, Shehachnosas Arachim Godo. Make Kabbalah's Panea Shino. God doesn't need you. <laughs> you, not, you don't have to food, feed him any food. He was here before you were made. He doesn't need anybody. But you have to be nice to people. That's number one. It says in the Pick of Others, if you're nice and friendly and honest to people, you are certainly a decent Jew. But if you're very religious and go through all the religious motions and then you cheat in business, you're not. A religious Jew, you're a fraud, as it says in the Silsi Shorim, Derech Hashem, Chavos Alvavos, all the Muslims for him. The main emphasis is Bein Orum Lechaveru, not Bein Orum Mokim, that's number two. Because when you, when you when you expire and leave this world, you go to Shemaim, they ask you three questions. 
Number one, where you would cheat. Not if you kept Shabbos or uh, did a riot or ate tra- kosher. Uh-uh. Were you a Ghana cheat, liar, thief, and embezzler? Hmm? First question. Were you an honest man between you and other men? That's what bothers him the most. Not other stuff. Hmm. Did you give and take honestly? Did you sign documents that weren't true? Did you say stuff that wasn't true? So anyhow, we learn from here then all of them are more more important. Therefore, right after the service of Dibras, we talk the first mitzvah, if you have an evidence, we had to treat them, had not to mistreat employees. How, what happened if you damaged somebody, hurt somebody, injured somebody, stole something, um, admitted it, didn't admit it, uh, break an entry, all these things. Then we get to building the Mishkan, which is less important than then than Odom Chavero, which is the 53 mitzvahs. 17 major categories with 53 mitzvahs in the Sefer of, uh, in the Parsha of Mishpatim. Then come between you and Hashem, build a Mishkan. And then we go back after this week's Parsha, next week's Parsha about the Begadim of the coin. Then we go back to Kisisa about the Egel. Then we go back to chronological order. The only reason why Teruma came before the Egel is to make it come after Mishpatim. To let you know that these 53 laws of uh, interpersonal... Mm, Conduct comes before the building of the Michigan, a place for God to come down. That's secondary importance. And then we go back to the chronological order that came out of its rhyme on the 15th of Sivan, and 49 days later was Shavuos, very good, and thir- 40 days after Shavuos was Shavuos of Tammuz, so 49 and 40 is 89, 90 days, three months later, and that was Shavuos of Tammuz, and then of El Tishrei three months later Moshe comes down from Hasina on Yom Kippur and the next day he tells him yes you have been forgiven Hashem is not going to destroy you he pleaded for 40 days because if Hashem would destroy Klai Yisrael so he would have destroyed the entire world and all the planets and all the universes because the whole shooting match was made only for Yisrael the first word of the Torah Bereshi stands for Shona Ra as a kimchi Kabbalah Yisrael Torah and if they don't they'll say Turn the whole thing back to Tohu Vavohu. It says Chazal. The whole thing is for Yisrael. If you're not an example and the light to the nations, I don't need the whole thing. The whole purpose Hashem made this world with all the planets and billions of stars that maybe, 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 maybe a fraction of a fraction of a people will recognize the invisible force that runs everything. The force behind all the forces of nature. Nature is Hashem. So, therefore we have Mishpat and first then Truman. And if the truma is finished and the big day kahuna next week, then we go back to the ego. He sees so. Now let's talk about truma. Truma means give a gift. You want to build a Mishkan because you did this terrible avail, you got to give gold and silver and copper and blue wool and purple wool and red wool and, and oil and spices and everything like that and stones for the koshin and uh, that the coin wears. All these things. Truma. Elevate truma. Why don't you call the name of the Sedra Matana? No, truma. When you give a gift, you get elevated. You're not doing the, the recipient any favor. You're doing yourself a favor. Do you know that the money you give away for tzedakah after 120 years is the own, only money you own? The money, the millions of dollars in the bank or investment that you never spent on tzedakah is not yours because when you die, you leave it. But the money you gave away is yours. The only money you own is the one you gave away. That's yours forever. So that's why the word Bayitnu, you'll see it later in the Parsha, they shall give, is read backwards and forwards the same way. A palindrome. Bayitnu, read it this way, read it that way. When you give, you get. And you get, you give. Truma means elevate yourself by giving a gift. Not that you're doing somebody a favor. You're getting elevated. Do you know when the cow nurses from the mother, the mother gets more pleasure than the calf? Do you know when you give money to an ani, you the giver? The, uh, I guess more, more benefit than the, than the taker. You have schus to give him. It's a schus to give somebody tzedakah. Because if he doesn't get it from you, he'll get it from somebody else. But you, the giver, has more benefit than the taker. The cow gets the more pay, more pleasure than the calf. Because the, the mother doesn't milk it, it'll get, it'll get gangrene. The other, and uh, who knows, will die. You have to book in my hand or you have a calf. And nowadays you have machines, but the, the, the mother benefits more than the calf. The giver gets more than the taker. So therefore, when you give, you get. But it knows a palindrome back and forth. You have many words in Hebrew that are palindrome. Abba, sus, 
read it both ways, right? Many words, there's many palindromes. There's English palindromes too, like dad, read it back and forth, pop, mom, noon, did, ziz, to quit, hurl, you know, to uh, hurry up, tit for tat, cat, written back and forth, wow, sis, bob, and Hebrew you have it too. You have shemesh, back and forth, abo, leil, night, mum, back and forth, elo, aleph, lamed, aleph, david, hazet, back and forth, vav, vav, yud, vav, sus, Okay, so by it knows the palindrome that means what you give, you get back. So therefore, the center is called Trumon because it elevates you. Next explanation of Trumon. You know, it says you give a gift. And it tells you uh, you have to give a chazi shekel every year. Not only this time, always to count the people. You know, count, can't count people because if you count people, you'll get this punishment. That's why when you have a mini, you don't say one, two, three, four, five. You're not allowed us to do that. You can't say Achat Stein You have to just look at them with your eyes. And count them, or say the plastic that has ten plusukim, ten words in it. If there's twenty people, you you can uh, you can estimate. You're not allowed to count Jews, because what you see in front of you is ten Jews. There may be five hundred neshamas in that room of that man's father's 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 father. When you go to a bris, you don't see him, but he's there. El Yohanavi, called El Yohanavi. It's called the Kisish El Yohanavi. And suppose three hundred people in the world are having a bris the same day. That's correct. He said all all the bris. We're talking about that angel of Malach. It's not just said Baba Mice, it's true. It's called Kisa Shel Eliyahu, you make a special seat. If it's just a mushroom, you wouldn't make a seat, would you? And, um, so, um, so, um, Truma is an elevating gift. And, um, I want to tell you something about this. Truma is also. And when you get there as a soil, you got to give a Kohen a Truma from your five, seven uh, species. Shiva's Amina, wheat and barley and the five fruits. You got to give them 2%. Tru, tru, truma's 2%. Eight of Varm Shayyam um, Shear, it says in the morning before davening. These are things that have no Shear, and Truma is one of them, has no Shear at all. Rabbanan made up 2%, but Torah doesn't have any Shear. So it says in the morning, Eight of Varm Shayyam Shear, I pay off the corners of the field. You could have a field 50 acres. And give one kernel here, one kernel here, one kernel here, if you're a cheapskate. Or you can have a whole section of the corners here, and if you're a real rascal, you make a round field, therefore you don't, want people, you don't have to give any because there's no corners. <laughs> How do you like that? But I shall stay next year. That part that you cut out from the Kohen, that's all you're going to have next year. Instead of having 98% and you give away 2% to the Kohen, therefore you're going to have next year 2%, and you're going to lose 98%. So if you want to have a round field in order to pocket yourself from pay up, or if you want to have a round house and no doorways, you pocket yourself a mezuzah because it has to have a doorpost, you play games with him, he knows all the tricks already, you know, he gave in your mind that ability to do that trick. You think he doesn't know all the rules and all the moves? So anyhow, so these are the things that have no shear, pay your and the bakurim, the first fruit, you can bring one fig from 10,000 fig trees. Or you can bring a, a large two percent. What Chachamim said. How long you stay in Eretz Yisrael on the three day on the Pesach Sukkot and Shuvah? You can come there for five minutes and then go home. Or you can bring a little cheap animal, a uh, a car from and then leave. Or you can bring a fancy car and stay for three four days. So why don't you mention Chuma? Chuma has no shear. Midrashim. Answer is it does have a shear. What is the shear? We have to give two percent to the coin, and then we have to give what's left from let's say a hundred tons or a hundred acres or a hundred pounds. We give two percent to the coin, but ten percent of what's left is ninety-eight. Ten percent of ninety-eight is nine point eight to the levy. Meiser Rishon is called, and the levy has to give to the coin also a truma, but that's truma's meiser. He has to give 10% of the 10% we gave him. Ah, that's Midoraisa. That is a shear. He has to give the lady, all the Jews give him 10% of their product. He gets a lot of 10%. He has to get a 10% of all of the things that he got. He has to give 10% to the coin. That's called Meiser Min HaMeiser, a tenth of a tenth. Or a Trumas Meiser. So it does have a shear. 
Therefore, you can't say it in the morning. I do dvarim she'ain gam shir because because uh, meiser um, and a meiser or truma's meiser has a shear. And whereas we say in the morning, ain't the she ain't gam shear. So it doesn't have a shear for you because Rachacham made up two percent. But for lady to the kohen, he has to give a tenth of a tenth. So it does have a shear. Now I'll get you another explanation of the word truma. You know, truma in Aramaic means tray may off two out of a hundred. Two out of a hundred is one out of fifty. Ah, bingo. One out of fifty, two percent. That's how they have built in to the code words in Remez, a hidden form that uh, Moshe got from Sinai, Toshiba Peh, the oral law, which is Chachamim, uh, that you have to give to the Kohen, you have to give to the Kohen two percent. Trey may or two from a hundred. Two, Trey from a hundred is one from fifty, fifty percent. Now I'm going to tell you a knockout thing. This whole Mishkan. The, the, the building and the yard around it. The outside dimensions of the chasers is chasers 50 by 100 amos. That's 50 by 100. It's 50, 100 is 5,000. The base of Mikdash and Harabai is the outside, outside, outside dimension is five, a, rect, a square, 500 by 500. This happens to be a rectangle in the Mishkan, in the Bizbar. 50, the yard, the chasers, 50 by 100. And the area is 5,000. No, square amos, right? But the one in the base of English was a square. 500 amas by 500 amas. 500 square is 250,000. Square amas. The 5,000 divided into 250,000 is exactly 50. The Mishkan is a truma of the base of English. Do the math. 50 times 100, 5,000. And 500 times 500, 250,000. Take off the three zeros of both. You got... And you got five into two fifty. That's fifty. The Mishkan, what, the Mechatzer was the Mishkan was one fifty at two percent truma of the area of the base of English. Isn't that something? <laughs> now let's learn the Parshvi. Daber Shem and Moshe Leimer. Daber of Nei Yisrael, speak to the Nei Yisrael. Yikoli Truma. Take from me a Truma. No gift. I'm not gonna say how much. I mean, I totally don't know how much. The Hayes called each from every man. Ashid ben libo, that is hard promise him. If you want to be gracious, you give a lot. If you're not, you be cheap, you give a little. If you want to call ish, Ashid ben libo, that is hard, decides for him to give him the double. Take less to must take my chuma. Built into this pasuk is the 30, is the 50, 150, 2%. But it's also built into here, if you want to give a little more than average, 2.5%. Which is 40, 140th. And also for cheapskates, uh, 60th. 1.67%. Where do you see that? Call 30 and 20 is 50. That's 2 percent. Li Lamed Yud is 40. A 40. That's two and a half percent. May Ace Call Mem Chav is 60th. 1.67 percent. So you got everything covered here. The cheap scale, the average, and the and the and the, and the very gracious person. Um, Cheapskate is one sixtieth, which is uh, one point six seven. The average, a fiftieth, which is two percent, and the gracious, which is a fortieth, which is two and a half percent. What do you take? Is gzov, kesem, and chodesh three types of metals: the gold, silver, and copper. You know why they're building this mishkan as a kapara for the golden eagle? Who made the eagle? The heir of Rab, the converts. They made it. They got slaughtered. So she came down on, she had the 18th of Tammuz, and he saw that, and he says, um, who is truly, truly a religious Jew and a believer, in, and not in Abode Zor, which the eagle was. Come to me. The whole shaded lady came, 22,000. He says, take a sword, and go through cloudy soil. If you see anyone with bulging eyes, or their hip separated from their, um, the upper part of the body, Cut the head off. Bulging eyes. They were unfaithful to me because I said I would be back on the 40th day. They looked at it. They, they didn't have watches. They said the 40, but Erev said it's 40 days, not here. So but, uh, they, they, the Sadiq said, why don't you wait a day? Maybe you're off by a few hours. No, 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 no. We're right. So they made an eagle and miraculously God helped them and it came out a golden eagle that was eating grass around Hasina. It was grass. That's why it says keep the animals off the mountain. There was a or there was a oasis there. Shar Ochel Asaf. Asaf. No, it didn't say moo. It said nu. <laughs> a Jewish an ego. I'm just joking, but we're telling you, it was a golden cat that spoke. Someone 
put in its mouth Hashem's name, Yudke Bovke, and it said, Anochi Hashem Alekecha. The calf said that. The Bodhis Zora had a power. If you want to go away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Shem will let you see things that no from Jew sees. You'll see the power in your Sheker, in your Avodah Zorah. Now Shem made it that this Sodom get in, got into that Egel and made him eat grass and say, Yonochi Hashem, look at us at the Midrashim. If you're wicked and rotten, you will see everything to support your Shita. And if you're a Tzaddik, you'll see everything that's the right way. Whatever your intention is, that's what you're going to see. If you want to be equal evil, they said they looked at the sky and they saw a stretcher with Moshe Rabbeinu uh, in heaven. And they said, look on that. Four days ago, he went to the Harsin, I was burning fire. And we saw him going to fire. See, he's dead. We see the angels carrying his stretcher with, um, with uh, his body in it. So he's dead. Let's get a new religion, new God. So they looked to the Erev Rab, the converts. Yeah, you want to say, why were the Jews punished? Because they went along with this. They didn't make it, but they celebrated. They maybe danced around it. And they got up the next morning before Moshe came and did immoral moral things because the vote of always lead to Arayos. Which means if you want to see why the Torah is not eminent, you'll find a thousand reasons why. And Abhyam will give you support. And if you're a big Russia, you will have the power of Kishu. You can do miracles if you're wicked. But Moshe said to them, I will be back in 40 days. That means he'll be back in 40 days. Not 40 days in one second. 40 days. So they didn't know how to figure this. They said, Moshe told us in the middle of the day, they'll be back in 40 days. They didn't understand. Moshe said 40 complete days after two days is over. Not me ace, la ace, for a minute, two minutes, 40 days later. They were off by 12 hours. So in the evening, they made the eagle. In the morning, Moshe showed up. And it was too late. So he said, Mila Shem Elai to the Shevet Levi. Remember, they were not learning, they were not working in the shrine. They learned Torah, because Pharaoh Moshe had made, Yosef had made, 100 years before, all priests of every religion can be deferred from government service, like we had in America in the Second World War. 4D, deferment of divinity deferment. If you're in a shiva, you don't have to go to army. That's, that's an old thing. They, they learned it from Yosef, who instituted that, instituted that with Pharaoh. All priests, because he knew his brothers were coming, and some of them wanted to sit and learn. So they, they learned the whole time, the 210 years, and they never did any work. And therefore they were more religious than everybody else, because they weren't beaten. And since they weren't beaten, they didn't increase. Kashiyanu came yirbu, and they weren't nayana, and they didn't yirbu. Therefore they had the smallest shaven of 22,000. The rest had 75,000, 50,000, 60,000, 40,000. But Levi didn't work. They were the biggest army to Chachamim. But they didn't increase either, because the more, more they beat them, the more they increased. And they weren't beaten, they didn't increase. Only 22,000. But 22,000 hints to the 22 letters of Alavay. They were the biggest Torah scholars. So Moshe said, Mila Shem on the 18th day of Machesh, on the day after the Egon, who is Torah Shu? Come over here. A lot of people came. For many Shvatim. But the whole Shevet Levi came. He says, take a sword to all you people over here. Take a sword. Who knows? More than 22,000. The whole Shevet Levi, they were Torah true. Because they were scholars from Mitzrayim. They never they didn't get involved in the Egon. So why didn't they stop the perpetrators? Why didn't they kill them? They saw that Aaron gave in. They're going to show up Aaron that he's not from. Why did Aaron give in? Because Aaron really recognized that if, you, if he stands up like his nephew, Chur, they'll kill him. Like they killed Chur, his grandson. His ne ne nephew. Miriam married. Not sure, yeah. No, if I'm, uh, well, Miriam's uh, son, Chur, got killed. He said, if they kill me, they won't have a coin to be mechaper for their affairs. Moshe came down from the mountain. He says, look what they did to you. What did they do to you? Look how you gave in. You, could, you, you gave in. You should have said, You don't have to show any... They, they, the people, shouldn't have showed any covered for you. They should have attacked the Erevab and killed them. And you should have given your life. And ah, there's no coin. God will be mechaper. Don't you worry about that. That's not your business. We have a rule. Messir Snefesh is for three things. One is Abu You should have given your life for that. And because you didn't, Hashem punished you twice. Two of your sons. Don't be smarter than the Torah. So I, I, there's nobody holier than Aaron, biggest Kohen, God old Kodesh Kedoshim, the Tzaddik, except he's not a Mani Yisrael. To be a Mani Yisrael, you have to be more tough than nice. And Aaron was more nice than tough. That's why Moshe is the Mani Yisrael. And when he went over, came down, and he saw them dancing, 
They were frozen, the people. Petrified. They wouldn't start up with Moshe like they did to Aaron the day before. They wouldn't dare. Moshe was Midas Adin. Aaron was Midas Arachim. And that's why I made shoulder between people. But you can't be a monarch if you're too nice. To be a monarch, you have to be tough as nails. Tav Mechokim, Shein Ekotshin Kabarzo, and the Tav Mechokim. You know how to learn, but you're not a Tav Mechokim. A Tav Mechokim means your character and your knowledge is perfect. You've got to be tops. So Moshe went over to the eagle, living eagle, grabbed it by the neck, and it stopped, dropped dead in his hands. And he took the thing and ground it up in a grinding wheel and made gold powder. And he mixed it with fresh water coming out of the ground. It made every single man, woman, and child drink that water. And if they were unfaithful to God, like a sota who's unfaithful to her husband, her eyes bulges out and turn green. And the top of the bottom and the bottom top of the body and the bottom separate. He says, you see these simonim of unfaithful people like a sota? Killed, cut their head off. So it says that day they executed 3,000 people. About 3,000 people. Shlosh <laughs> alof mish. And they were all Erevav. And the other Jews were built guilty too because you see... Uh, they, uh, some of them didn't make it, but they danced around it. Maybe they kissed it, they hugged it. They, and the, and the guy even said, the Arab Rav said, Eilu al-Kechel Yisrael, this is your God Yisrael. Your God. Now, if the Jews would have made it, would have said, Eilu al-Kechel this is our God. But they said, Eilu al-Kechel, your God. So it's the Rim, it's the Raya, and it's the Raya that the Arab Rav made. Anyhow, so, they, that, that you have to give gold, silver, and copper. With the Chedas and light blue wool, by gum and a purple wool. With the last shani and red wool, sheish and linen, and and goats means the hair from goats. You know, cashmere is the hair from goats. Angora is the hair from goats. Um, so it was goat hair, because that was the second cover of the Mishkan, pitch black goat hair. But Otis Eilimudamim and the skins of rams dyed red. But Otis Techashim and the skins of Techashim, that was an animal God only created for Moshe Rabbeinu in the Midbar. It was called a Tachash. It had six colors. The skin had natural six colors. It was a unicorn with a horn in the middle of its head. God made it for Avram Avinu too. When he was told not to shecht his son, he looked and he saw an animal and it was a tachash. Even so it says ayof. But it was an ayof, a ram that had one horn in the middle. So the Greek philosophy with this uh, animal with the one horn in the middle is taken from Medrash, from Aram Medrashim here. And the Tachashim was not just a Medrash, it was really true. It lasted for 40 years even after the Mishkan was built. Because it says in, the, in Medrashim, the Jews made their shoes for 40 years from the skin of the Tachash. So they, and Tachash has six colors, how do you know? Because the word Tachash comes out to a gematria of, what's the gematria of Tachash? 708. Well, 708 is 15, 1 and 5 is 6. That's six colors. Um, I see sheet him and uh, not cedar, acacia wood that doesn't rot. Shem and Lamar oil, where do you get oil from? <laughs> In the middle of the desert, where do you get oil from? Shem and Lamar oil, uh, Shem and Lamar, the oil for lightning, which is him, and spices for Shem and Mishnah for the anointing oil. The Ketoris Hasamim and spices for the Ketoris Hasamim. There is 16. Uh, 11, 16 Ketoras, you only need 11. But if you have these other five, you can use them. Uh, what are the 11? You say it every morning before Bar Shoma. Feed them on the Torahs. The 11. Five are necessary. I mean, 11 must be in there. Five are extra. One of the five makes the flame go straight. It's a different thing, but you need 11 minimum. Abne show I'm stand, uh, 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 stones of onyx, flat onyx, that goes on the coins, shoulder here, we write the names of Bnei Yisrael, six names here, six names here, together had 50 letters, 25 and 25, well six of them, the Reuben Shimon Levi, who does offer, doesn't have 25, you have to fill in with the six other letters, Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, Shifte Yisrael, and it came out that it's, um, that it's, um, that is 25 letters here, 25 here. Anyhow, Avni Miluim and filling in stones, the eight foot for the skirt that the coin wore in the back, and the straps came up to the shoulders, and you put the two stones here, and you write the six names and six names. The Achoshan and the best plate that had the 12 stones. Each one was written the name of the Shaver. Also, they make, the, make me a Mikdash, not Mishkan. The, the, there's no Mishkan to build a Mishkan. The Mishkan is a mini, temporary, traveling, based on Mikdash. The Mitzvah is to make a Mikdash. And this is a mini form. This is no mitzvah to build a mishkan, but since you're not there yet, you have to travel, so you make a mini mikdash. That's why it's called mikdash, and not mishkan. The shachanti besochem al dwell 
amongst you. This is a hint for the, the years of the first bias and the second bias. The shochanti, I will dwell amongst you. Yes, it means in the Mishnah, but it's also a hint to the 410 and the 420. The 410 of the first bias and the 420 of the second. How do you know that? The shochan, I will dwell. T, 410. And where do you see the second? In the word. The shani, the second one. Tach, 420. Every word of the Torah has some deeper levels. Every single word, every medrash, every minik of Rabbanon, every Torah Shabbat is built into these words. This book, these words have multiple meanings of every single word. I just gave you an example. <laughs> There's many more things on the word Shekhandi. It would take me an hour to go through three prosukim. All the Balaturans and all the Archaims and all the, sh- uh, the Sachasam Sofer and, and the, 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 these deep concepts, the morale on their symbolism. All the colors have symbolism. You want to know why they have to have gold, silver, and copper? Gold represents tzaddikim. Because they're found in nature naturally. A nugget of gold is found. Yes, you have to smell it sometimes, but sometimes they're found as nuggets. There are certain pure neshamas in this world. Gold represents all the Jewish people. I mean the tzaddikim. Kasev, it tarnishes a little bit of oxide. You rub it off. And you clean again. You get it clean again. That is a balchula. person that does have airs. Polish it. Never found with nuggets. Gold is found with nuggets, and it never corrodes, by the way. That's why the context of every expensive uh, electronic equipment is always gold. It never, 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 never oxidizes. The contact will be perfect. Real holy sadikim, there are some people in the world like that. Gold represents sadikim. Silver is a tzaddik, but sometimes it does a bearers. You have to oxidize, you have to polish it. The choshev is for shoyim. Copper, if you let it sit for a couple of years, it's pitch black. You ever did that? You don't take it off with a nice soft cloth. You need worse than steel wool. You need sandpaper. Then it's brilliant like gold. It looks like gold, but it ain't. That's fool's gold. Copper. We're not talking about bronze. Copper. Pure copper. The Choshes is copper, which means a Russia. You can also become a Balchuma. It's much different than a Balchuma. Than a, you can also become a Balchuma. Than, much different than a person who had, does a few of errors and you polish it with a cloth. But then the Choshes is a and Rishoyim all depends who the next one is. If you're a very big Sadiq, but they're bigger than you, then you're the Russia compared to them. Like in Purim, you got to give Shlach Matan Slaviyana to the poorest person. Suppose everybody in the neighborhood is a multi-millionaire, and you're only half a millionaire, then you're poor. You've got to give him Matan Slaviyana. It's all relative. You know, the community is made up of Seaboard, Sadiq, Benin, Rishoyim. The Russia is only Russian compared to what the group higher than him is, and the group higher than them. If you have a phenomenal Sadikim, a next level of average Sadikim, and these people, plain people who are nice, but they're not them, compared to them, they're Russian. That's only relative. The Kesem Zov, because Zov, Kesem, and Chosh is the types of people. Then you have Cheles, light blue. This reminds you of the sky, the magnificence of outer space. That's why the Tzitzes have to have one eighth. Blue goes to man, remind you of tremendous outer space. The ocean is light blue. Something because three quarters of the planet is water. Three quarters of your body is moisture. When Hashem created the world, doesn't say He made wine, it was already there. Ruach al Him, it was already there, H2O. That, that it's true there was water on Mars. It's 100% true because Hashem had the whole universe coated in water that He made the water go away. Yes, the water in outer space. Still up there. It's not the oceans. Not the clouds. Way up there's water. This is a world that God created. It was already in existence before he made autumn for a long time. Because you see, he already had H2O. It means that all the essence were there. And when he said the water go away, he saw the earth. So the earth must have been made already. And autumn was made fully grown, not a baby. And all the ligers and lions and tigers and snakes and eagles were fully grown. So the earl was, and the, and the, and the ace, and God ate and had trees already there for a long time. So the earth, uh, the earth was, by the time they got to the sixth day, very, 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 very old already. Because when you go and buy a diamond ring for your kala, if you study chemistry, carbon can crystallize into diamonds millions of years. You can't do it in 5,770 years. So, the diamond must have been there millions of years before. It takes millions of years to crystallize. Study chemistry about the half-life of minerals, of elements. So, it must have been there. So, Hashem made a very, very, very old world in six days. They can make today diamonds, pure, pure, pure diamonds, in 72 hours. 
You put it in an oven, three feet thick, and you turn up the temperature, the temperature of the sun, 7,000 degrees centigrade, and you put the atmospheric pressure instead of, like we have on our hands, 14 pounds, 1,000 atmospheres pressure, and in three days you got pure diamond. Not cubic zirconia or crystal. Diamond. Perfect. If we can, if we have Goodrich can do this, and 45 years ago, in three days, God could do the world billions of years old in six days. So that's why, Olam Yishon, the Baruch HaKadosh Baruch God made an old world the first second. Yes, the world is only 57 or 70, plus Shazim Abrations, which is millions and billions of years old. He made an age from, from the get-go, from the first second. Adam was born completely from mature. So the whole Machlok is, is did Adam Arishan have an, a navel? Did he have an umbilical cord? Well, if every one of his children has what he has, he must have had it. So how did he have it? Who was he cut off from? He, made from, he came from the earth. So God made him fully done like any other human being, as if he had a mother. He had an umbilicus, a tabur. It was made like that. Just like he was made fully, uh, fully grown, alpinais, he had a tabur too. Because every child after him ha has a copy of him. So, um, the world is only 57, 70 plus Shasim Abrashas, and that could have been, in those six days of 24 hours, he could have made a billion year old world. Yes, so the Big Bang is right. Ari Kaplan figured it out and is safer there, and he's, no one suspects his Sitkas. Ari Kaplan said if you go to the there's certain Api Kabola, that every day is a thousand years, and of Yaakov and Akko, a Talmud of the, of the Gro. Of the the Ramban said that the world is uh, not one thousand years old every day; seven thousand years old every day. And saying that another person, about Kubel, said no. It's three hundred sixty-five and a quarter times seven thousand every day. So it comes out exactly I don't know fifteen billion years old, exactly like the Big Bang. Now, all the Chachamim in the world are not fools, you know. Yesh Chachma Bagoyim Tam, and believe it if it's provable. If you don't believe it, you're not the curse, because Hazal said, Tom, got to believe it. Yeah, and if there's a proven absolute without a slave, Tom, and believe it, because Hazal said so. They prove the world is round, not flat, so if you don't believe it, you're a fool. And it says in Pei, Dalin, and, and Psochim, that the planets don't go around the earth. The earth goes around the sun. And Rebbe said, you know, they're right, we're wrong. Listen to them, the Babylonians, it's true. The, the sun doesn't go under the Rekia. At night it goes under the well, earth. The earth goes around, and um, they're right, we're wrong. So you see that certain things that uh, God knew better than us. Torah was given at Sinai, not science. Science developed. Anyhow, so that uh, represents that. The Chavis is light blue, the outer space. Agomen is purple, that's Regency, that's nobility. Today you go to a college uh, graduation, all the way in purple, because it comes from the base of English. Mishkan, that represents aristocracy. Tlashoni, red wool, that represents animal drives. You have to subdue all of that to Hashem. The Sheish and linen, vegetative power of the earth. Your power of regeneration, you've got to control that. The ism and strength, az, be extremely strong when it comes to serving God. Uz kanomer, be as quick and as energetic like a leopard. But if you use the azus the wrong way, azus panim, you go to Gehenna. There's azus of the Kedusha, there's energetic energy used for Kedusha, and then there's azus panim against the Torah. The odors alim and the skins of, uh, of rams dyed red. Okay, let's go into that. One more thing I want to just tell you. They made in the Mishkan uh, seven things. Six things. They made like this, an aron, a box where you put in the luchos, the, the tablets, and they made out of sapphire. And they put in there the, the Moshe Sefer Torah. And Tilbet Saul made his second aron, they put in the broken luchos too. And the box was made out of two and a half amas, which is five feet, by one and a half amas, which is three feet, which is one and a half amas tall, which is three feet tall, a wooden box, a car, a, like a casket. The Ebenezer said it had little legs. Others say, no, it did not have any legs. Flat box laying on the ground. That's the Aron. Not like our Aron standing up. It was flat. That is the Aron. HaKodesh. And on top of that, there was a thick kapores. Kofar, cover. Yom Kippur, it covers you. 
doesn't let the, the, the destroy you. It was that cover was as long as the box, two and a half solid gold, twenty four karat gold, two and a half amas long, five feet, one and a half amas wide, three feet, and uh, one tefach, four inches thick. Do you know how much that weighs? Five feet of solid gold by three feet by four inches. Who knows? 250 pounds. And you know, 250 pounds times 12 ounces? Because Troy ounce is 12. And today, at $11,000 an ounce, you know that Kaporis? Probably cost, do the math, $10 million. And on top of the uh, Kaporis was Kruvim, 36 inches high, 10 to 4 them, 10 times 3 and a half inches, 36. Solid gold coming out of the cupboard is not connected or soldered, connected. You know that Kavruvin on top of the Aron probably cost fifty million dollars. Or came out of a block, you have to chisel away the gold. Can't connect it or solder it or glue it. Billions of dollars maybe at eleven $1 hundred dollars today, an ounce of gold. Can you imagine? And it weighs two hundred and fifty pounds. And that is the Aron. Now, how, how does a Jew have permission to make images when God said specifically, no images on top of the Aaron, two images, a child's face, two male children looking at each other, you're not allowed to make image? This is one of the exceptions of the Torah. How can a Kohen wear, you're going to get next week's parasha, he's going to wear garments made out of wool and linen, shakas. It's us to wear shakas, us to the rice, he has to wear it. You're not as high as Because the big dagoon are made of shakas. How, what right do you have to light the menorah on Shabbos afternoon for, for Moti Shabbos? You're not allowed to make a fire. Check the animals on Shabbos. There are certain things that you can do in the base of Mikdash. Shabbos doesn't exist in the base of Mikdash. You know why? Because the Shekhinah is there. We have to have Shabbos once a week to remind us that the Shekhinah is here. But when you're in a place where there's Moli Kedush, you don't need to remind us. Ah, what about Shabbos? That's one of the chukif. And the Yom Kippur, you're not allowed to wash even your little finger. The coin goes in the, in the mikvah five times. Because... There's exceptions to the rule. And they're not exceptions at all, because if you understood the whole idea, there are no exceptions at all. Anyhow, the Aron was one thing. And then they made the Shulchan, the golden table, where they put the twelve chalas, six and six. Then they made the menorah. And then they made the parochis, the curtain. And then they made Mizbeach Hanachosh, the copper Mizbeach, which is five amas by five amas by ten amas tall. Ten amas means twenty feet. That's higher than this building. And higher than any yeshiva, inside base measures. 20 feet, how'd you get there? You swing on a rope, you go with a helicopter, how do you get up there? Oh, you tell me they had a cabbage, a ramp. Where do you see in the Torah anything about that? Nowhere in the Torah. The Chachanan tell us there was a cabbage. A ramp, 32 amas long, 64 feet. Well, it was 64, and it's time high, you know, the distance underneath, because that's a hypotenuse of a right triangle. Well, you know, the hypotenuse is always the longest side in every triangle. So if this is 64 feet, the, the distance from here to here probably is 59 or 60 feet. 30 ounces. That was 32 ounces. Anyhow, so these are the kalim they made. The aron, the carries, the, the, um, the luchos, and that must have weighed with that cop horrors. And thing with the wooden three boxes, who knows? That could make weight. I don't know, 250 pounds, and then the crew of another 150 pounds. Four or 500 pounds, are you going to put in two poles? In four rings? Are you going to pick this thing up? The first second you touch the poles, it'll crack. How do you put two little poles going through a ring? How do you pick up something that weighs 800 pounds? Answer as soon as you touched it. In those sets, Atzma picked itself up. It levitated. Same thing with the Shulchan. And the Mizbeach, 20 feet tall. 10 almost. How do you pick that up with two bars? With, how? It, as soon as you touch it, it goes up. I'll be nice. And uh, the whole midboard experience is a nice. And so I think we have enough for today. And you want to learn more about the parish, you listen to me every single day on Torah anytime. Oh no. The call Han Loshon. Dial the number, the local number, and you dial uh, it's the playback number. And um, what's the number? And I'll tell you how to get me. There's about 70 people doing Chumash. So you have to dial the number 646. 977-7900, and then as soon as the guy starts talking, you just dial 11101, that's me. Triple 101, and you get every single day a new shear, Sunday on Rishon, Monday on uh, Shani, today, Wednesday, it's already on there, it's Ravi, you learn the whole thing with tremendous insight and details. 
Life is looking stock. Have a nice week.